Hi y'all, Biohack here. Uh, sorry it's been quite a while since my last video, um, and this video isn't even going to be on any science. Um, but I wanted to make a guide on how you can make me, I mean you, uh, millions of silver a day um, in a fairly low effort uh, manner. There are basically three ways you make silver in Black Desert Online. Uh, there's passive income, AFK income, and active income. Passive income is things like your worker empire, which will essentially run uh, as long as you're online and keep your workers fed. Um, but then there's a lot of ways that require your character to actually be doing something, but don't require you to actually be at your computer. Um, and so I call those things like AFK income. And when it comes to AFK income, the life skill processing pretty much beats everything else. Um, as you can see, I'm a master 29 processor, 87%. Uh, so the guru dream is uh, very alive. Um, but this video is basically going to walk you through how to do processing. Um, it's also going to make the distinction between processing and trading. Many people uh, talk about how good trading is for money, and you may have heard people talk about trading. Um, however, what most of those people are doing is actually processing, and I'm going to show you how you can make money uh, without actually getting up to Master 2 trade, um, which is what most people think is required in order to make money with AFK processing. Okay, so let's get some of the basics out of the way. Um, in order to do AFK processing efficiently, there's a couple of things you're probably going to need to purchase off the cash shop. Um, the thing with AFK processing is the amount of time you can leave your computer is dependent on your weight limit. Essentially, you can process until you accumulate 100 weight in your inventory, 100% of your weight in your inventory, and then your character will stop processing. So in order to make this more efficient, there's a couple of things you're going to want. Um, one of them is the processing outfit, which is this hideous costume you can see here. Um, what this is going to allow you to do is process things directly from your warehouse. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but you can basically find it on the costumes tab in the pearl shop about halfway down, and it's 2,200 pearls each. Um, what this outfit allows you to do is when you access your warehouse, you'll get a button right here that says processing. You can click that button. You can click whatever it is you're going to process. And then when you start the processing, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to take the, the base materials from your warehouse, and when it produces the products, they'll end up in your inventory. And so then once your weight limit is totally full, your character stops processing. Therefore, the other thing that you'll likely want to get to improve your processing efficiency is the cash shop weight limit items. Um, these are probably going to run you about 40 to 50 bucks for all of them. You don't necessarily need all of them, but uh, the more you have, the more efficient you're going to be. Um, these are something that many people purchase anyway because you uh, can get a lot of value out of it for doing grinding um, and avoid coming back to town all the time. Um, and so I strongly recommend getting these items. If you don't have these items, you can kind of still sort of do AFK processing. Um, but if you were running into a situation where your character is just sitting around doing nothing all the time, you probably would be better off sticking to AFK fishing instead. AFK fishing is generally better... Um, in terms of how long you can leave your computer, but it doesn't make as much money as AFK processing. The other thing you're going to need to really get started is to finish this quest from uh, Feisty and Heidel. Um, I'll throw a, a link to the, the quest on the BD database. Um, but what this quest is required in order, and all of the prerequisite quests, are required in order to do um, crafting planks into plywood or melted shards into ingots. And so there's the, the quest is, is fairly easy. The quest chain doesn't take too long. It has some basic requirements. Um, but it's definitely something you're going to want to get done uh, at some point because it, it's very useful. And it's, not, it's really not too hard. All right, so let's talk about some of the math behind processing. If you go and you just look at the, uh, the database for the recipe on something like a white cedar plank, for example, um, you'll see that uh, it takes five cedar to make one plank or five timber and if you go and you look at the market you may be saying how does anyone make money doing processing the materials that go into it are clearly more valuable than the materials that come out of it um, and the reality is is that you make money by getting multiple procs on your crafts um, so this actually scales with your trade or your processing level up to um, professional five for metal and about artisan one for timber 
Um, and the reality is, is that once you hit these levels, you can actually get uh, a mini procs for every uh, attempt at the recipe. Um, I wrote an entire post on Reddit that went into pretty detailed math of exactly how all of this works. Um, I'll go ahead and throw that in the description below. But for this video, basically what you need to know is that it requires two timber to make one plank and four planks to make one plywood. Uh, the same thing is true for metal. Um, however, with metal for something like a brass crate, for example, it will require two copper and two zinc, um, but it's still four total. Um, however, when you're making uh, timber and even when you're making metal, um, you do have a chance of getting plywood while you're making planks. And so ultimately the math works out so that it costs 7.8 timber to make one plywood. Now, the best thing to process is whatever your workers can gather for you. And so if you choose to do this route, it's a very good idea to set up your worker node so that it's constantly gathering um, as many materials as you can get. And in fact, if you have a very efficient worker empire, it will essentially bring in materials faster than you can even process them. However, until you get to that point, if we go ahead and look at the market, you can see that even um, if we purchase materials, we can still make a pretty decent profit. Um, so for example, let's take a look at white cedar timber here. So white cedar timber is, is currently going for a pretty decent amount. Um, this is actually, I think, the maximum value that this timber sells for. And it's selling for 863 silver each. So let's go ahead and plug this into a calculator. Um, we have 863 silver or per timber, and it takes 7.8 timbers to make one plywood. So each plywood is going to cost us 6,731 silver to make. Now, if we go look at the market here, let's see what the plywood sells for. Uh, white cedar timber here. We can see that there's three listed for 12,600, but I think this is someone just trying to bait you into selling at min price. Um, uh, you can also see that there's quite a bit selling for 14,500. However, some of this stuff has been sitting for a few days. I usually would not pay this much for white cedar plywood, um, but it's not unreasonable to think you might be able to sell it for say 14,000 silver. So let's go ahead and plug the math in there. So if we have the plywood sells for 14,000 silver, um, we're also going to have to pay the market tax. So I forgot to include it in the uh, kind of required items, but uh, a value pack is pretty much required if you want to go the route where you sell your plywood on the market. Um, with the value pack, the tax comes out to 15.5%, which means that 84.5% is what we get to keep. And so that works out to 11,830 silver. Now, if you remember, we paid 6,731. So this means every plywood that we craft, we profit about 5,100 silver, 5,099 to be exact. Uh, the average processor can make anywhere from about 250 to 300 plywood an hour. Um, so if we say multiply this by 275, you can see that you're making about 1.4 million silver an hour, simply buying just random material off the market for maximum price, and then processing it and selling it back on the market. Um, obviously, if you're using workers to gather the material for you, um, you can essentially uh, include the value of the marketplace uh, tax. You would have had to pay for that silver or pay to sell those materials. So that can increase your profits as well. Um, and like I said before, if you get a very efficient worker empire, you can actually keep all of your... Um, you can have uh, more than enough materials coming in purely from your workers to keep yourself processing 24-7. Um, but uh, this can show you that you can make very good silver just simply purchasing material off the market, processing it, and then selling it back on the market. In the next section, we're going to talk about traders who are actual people who buy these processed materials. Okay, let's talk about trading. 
Um, there are a lot of misconceptions around trading, um, and it's been kind of a, a closely kept secret on how to do trading properly. Uh, many, many people have encouraged others to start doing trading without really understanding what it is, and most of those players have ended up doing processing with a side of trading and have not been hardcore traders. Um, up until essentially this Wednesday, trading was hands down far and away the best way to make money in the game nothing else even came close um and if you don't believe me let's just take a look at our anniversary stats uh that were posted this year about the richest players in the game the number one richest player on eu is lava lava and he's a master 14 trader he made all of his money using the strategy that i'm about to tell you about uh, for NA, the richest player is Killy Tall, who's more commonly known as Mickin, also a Master 14 trader, and also used this method to make all that money. Um, however, no one has probably taken this to more extremes than I have. Um, I've gone trading to the insane level. Um, but essentially, the way trading used to work is if we go and we take a look at, say, one of the trade NPCs here in Valencia, we can look at the, the materials. And the way materials used to sell is they used to range from, say, 130% all the way down to 80%. Um, however, the recent patch last Wednesday changed this so that uh, process materials, oh, I should go to the actual section on process materials. So that materials that are crafted by traders always sell at 100% and nothing ever changes this. So what me and a number of the other kind of uh, elite life skillers in the game figured out is that we could buy process materials off the market, craft them into crates, and then sell those crates in Valencia with very high trade level and uh, a very high percents of supply and make a ridiculous amount of money. Um, in the case of mine, or of my case, I say I've taken this to the more extreme. Um, if I show you just my crate workshops in Calpheon alone, you can see that essentially all of my 300 CP is invested into nothing but crate workshops. I have all the workshops in Calpheon. I have all the workshops in Trent, of course, um, all the ones in the neighboring cities, the neighboring farms. I have Etheria as well. Um, I've even started expanding down into Keplin, sending workers from uh, Calpheon and Trent there. Um, and at this point, I'm literally making tens of thousands of crates a week. Um, and when we could basically turn these in at very high percents, what you would do is essentially you'd run through all the channels, you'd settle your channels to a fixed value, you'd come back a few hours later, um, and then all the channels, if unless someone had come in and screwed them up, would be at very high percents, you could bang them out over and over and over again, and you could easily be making anywhere from 20,000 to 70,000 in profit uh, by purchasing materials off the marketplace and turning them in this way. Um, and as you can imagine, when you're making literally tens of thousands of these crates, uh, at the peak of this, I was probably making close to about 900 million silver a week, doing nothing more than buying materials off the marketplace and turning them in in Valencia. Granted, I spent probably two to three hours a day turning in crates, um, but it was still insane money, and I've accumulated billions of silver using this strategy. Um, oh, also... Uh, as you can see, I have, oh, that's just the workers in Calpheon. My total worker empire is about uh, 82 workers, and the bulk of these have some form of triple crate on them. You can see there's triple timber. Uh, I guess a couple of those guys don't. Here's a double. Um, anyway, you get the idea. And so, uh, you know, if you're making 30,000 crates a week and you're turning them in at 30,000 30, silver profit, you know, you could make almost 900 million silver just doing that. Um, so that is how traders used to do trading. And like I said, it was hands down broken, um, absolutely the best way to make money in the game. However, with the recent patch, uh, the profit on trading has sunk dramatically. Um, 
essentially they moved trading from a form of active income that involved channel hopping to get the maximum value to a form of passive income and don't get me wrong it's still a very good form of passive income and i still make quite a bit of money buying materials off the market and turning them into crates this is partly because i have the master 15 trade level which allows me to scale my bargain bonus very very high um so the reason I tell you all this is because these are the kinds of players you're targeting with when you sell process materials on the market. Um, essentially, a good portion of my day is spent literally just looking through the market and buying these materials. And as soon as this video is done, I'll probably end up buying a number of these. Um, I turn these into crates and then let my workers run and turn them in in Valencia. Uh, the question now, though, is not, is this hands down better than every other form of money? It's just, what is the most efficient use of my CP? Um, the reality is, is some of these workshops are probably not in very efficient use of CP, given how low the margins are. Um, but the moral of the story is, now that traders can make these huge volume of crates and turn them in all at once without having to worry about doing it actively, the price of processed materials has basically gone up across the board, and everything is selling at very high uh, values much higher than they would before so if you were worried about this patch somehow hurting your ability to do afk processing you don't need to fear at all um, there is plenty of demand for processed materials and they are going at very good values now that being said the most efficient way to get rid of these materials is still to make the crates yourself i'm not going to lie to you about that um, however master to trade is absolutely mandatory in order to make crates uh, for money. If you try and make crates and turn them in without Master 2, uh, you will make significantly less than you will if you sell the material on the market. Um, if you want to level trading, uh, making crates from unprocessed materials is a good way to do that, as well as some active trading. There's guides on that online, and you can go and ask people on Reddit. Um, but for now, just know that you should not try and turn in crates without Master 2 trading, but you will be able to make more money if you get Master 2 trading and you do processing this way. However, that being said, you can still make a very large amount of money without Master 2 trading, just selling the material on the market. I should also add that um, one of the things that this means is that the materials that you're going to want to make are the things that are actually being used for trade crates. So with respect to metal, that's going to be steel, brass, and bronze. Um, each of these can be good in their own right. Uh, you'll have to work out the math to see which one is profitable given the specific market conditions. But all of these are used for crates. Um, there are other types of ingots, such as zinc ingots, for example. Um, Oh, wow, these are actually selling for a lot. But, oh, you see that these have been sitting for many, many days and that no one is buying them. This is because um, these ingots aren't used for crates, and the only real purpose they have is for using upgrading alchemy stones. So if you're doing crates, you want to stick to steel, brass, and bronze. Or if you're doing processing for money, you want to stick to steel, brass, and bronze because these other things often will not sell. Um, and for plywood, you can basically make everything except for do not make elder tree plywood or um, palm plywood because though there are no crates that use those materials and um, therefore they just will not sell on the marketplace. Um, oh, I guess there's only 500 that's been sitting there a little while. Anyway, moral of the story is uh, stick to things like um, birch, pine, cedar, fir, etc. Um, the, the most difficult materials to get for, uh, for me as someone who wants to try and balance the different types of materials um, are acacia which is the limiting reagent for um uh for media crates maple can also be very challenging to get because it's used for both serendia and balanos crates um and so therefore it can be usually be a challenge and uh fur is actually the limiting reagent for calpheon crates so Pay particularly close attention to those materials um, because they're ones that will often sell for the largest margins. Um, but definitely just take a look at the market and see what's moving. Oftentimes what traders will do is they'll buy materials uh, if they can get them for good prices. I mean, I have spreadsheets for days on all of this. But you'll buy a material, say, if I can get the pine for a certain value. A bunch of min-listed pine just went up. Um, and then I might craft the maple myself to match it, for example. Um, so anyway, it's something to worth keep in mind because uh, that's what the materials you're going to want to make to actually make a profit. And these are the same materials that you're going to make uh, if you are actually intending to do crates as well. 
Um, there is one difference between uh, if you're doing processing for money versus doing processing uh, to make your own crates, and that is if you're doing it to make money, you should emphasize uh, worker gathering on the most valuable nodes, whereas if you're doing it to make your own crates, you probably want to make a, a more balanced approach so that you can make sure you're matching one white cedar to one acacia, you know, one maple to one ash, etc, etc, etc. Um, but anyway, just in case you weren't completely convinced that uh, this way of uh, making money is a really good form of income, I'm going to sneak into my fiance's computer using remote desktop and just show you her account real quick. Um, you can see that she's a master 24 processor. She has virtually no trade level. However, she's been able to acquire a significant amount of gear and a significant amount of wealth doing nothing more than buying material off the market and then selling it back on the market, essentially to me. Um, you can see that her net wealth in the bank is something like 2.4 mil. She's accumulated about a billion liquid silver. Uh, she's funded, you know, uh, most of her boss gear up to duo and then she's got a couple of uh you know she's got like a tri kazarka and stuff as well um so is it the best way to make money in the world no but considering this is a person who literally their highest character is level 56 um and they play the game you know very little essentially all she does is just buy materials she she's 136 or 150 cp uh you know, she, her worker empire is very small. All she does is essentially buy materials off the market and process them, partly to help me out and partly because she's been able to gear her character out quite well doing this. Um, so I also have another account, uh, which is the GM of my guild. Um, same deal on that account. I've made multiple billions of silver on him and he doesn't even try to make money. He's literally just processing materials to try and make up for things I can't get on the market. Um, so. All in all, it's a very good form of money. Um, if you do want to get Master 2 trade, you can improve it a little bit. Um, you know, I, I worked out some math the other day, and I think you could make something like 1.8 million if you were getting uh, a specific timber at the right price and selling it. I think it was actually white cedar at min price. Um, you know, you can make you can make like up to 2 million silver an hour just doing processing and selling the materials on the market, where you could make maybe 2.1 if you're doing a Calpheon crates, um, and more than that if you're doing some other form of crate and actually making the crates and turning them in with the desert buff that you get at Master 2 trade. Um, so anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you. If, um, if you have any more questions, feel free to check me out on Twitch. Um, I'm always happy to talk to people. I've been streaming a lot more recently, so um, you can come check me out there. I also hang out on Reddit a lot. Um, and if you leave questions in the comment section below, I'll try to get to those as well. Um, all in all, uh, you know, if you can keep this running round the clock, um, it's not unreasonable to expect to make, you know, anywhere between 30 and 50 million silver a day for essentially no player input. Um, I guess you have to spend a little bit of time actually buying the materials and then listing them on the market. Um, but you know, you can process, You it takes about uh, 15 hours to get one full market listing of all the materials. So it's really not that hard to sell everything and they move quick, um, especially if I'm online. Uh, so, you know, uh, I think it's a great way for new players to make money. Um, if it's something you want to do hardcore, consider getting Master 2 and making the crates yourself. Um, but I hope you found this helpful. Um, good luck!